Now here is an example of a simple cuboidal epithelium. You've seen this picture before. The cells are both the same height, width and depth, hence the cuboidal classification. Now, epithelia really carry out four major functions. And if you're aware of those four major functions, sometimes it's easy to assign those functions to the particular epithelia. We saw earlier with the simple squamous epithelium, the function was a very effective transcellular transport, very thin. Other epithelia, such as the one shown here, the simple cuboidal epithelium, are designed for very efficient absorption and also secretion of material. This happens to be the epithelium of the collecting duct, as I pointed out earlier. And these collecting ducts are very busily both absorbing and also secreting materials. Here is a simple columnar epithelium, again specialised for absorption and secretion. Often when the cell is very, very busy, they get very, very tall and the nucleus packs down to the basal area of the cell. Now, if you look at the shape of these nuclei, they're elongated towards the luminal surface. When you see elongated nuclei, it's a fairly good indication that the cells are columnar. Whereas in the previous slide, you may have noticed that the cell nuclei were nice and rounded. When you see rounded nuclei, you can be pretty sure that the epithelium is a cuboidal type of epithelium. Well, here's a stratified epithelium designed to be a barrier to protect. It's a wear and tear type epithelium. It's found in places like the oral cavity, the vagina, the esophagus, places where there's significant wear and tear. And the cells are lost as they move towards the surface. They're rapidly produced in the basal part of the epithelium and those cells move to the surface and as they move to the surface they change their shape and are lost to the surface as a result of wear and tear. That's the fourth major function of an epithelium and that's why this epithelium is structured in this way. Remember the four functions? Transcellular transport, absorption or secretion or both and here, wear and tear. Sometimes you have a epithelial surface such as the one shown here of pseudo-stratified epithelium and remember that although the nuclei here seem to be at different heights, all the cells are sitting on the basement membrane. Well, this epithelium also has surface specialisations on it that I'll explain it later on these surface specialisations are cilia and they can transport secretions along the surface, foreign bodies and also cells in certain organs. They're mainly associated with pseudostratified epithelium as you see here. You can also see pale secreting cells in this epithelium. They're secreting material onto the surface whereas the darker stain cells are absorbing. So sometimes in an epithelium you can have a number of cells performing the functions of that epithelium. Here's a section through the urinary tract, the bladder, and on the left hand side you can see the cells have a cuboidal type of appearance. It's very thick epithelium, but they're flattened on the right hand image when the bladder is distended. And at the apex of the cells, particularly those on the surface, you can see rather an eosinophilic or a pink or reddish stain. There are special plaques inside the epithelial cells that prevent water and also salt from passing across the epithelial surface. And that's very important in the urinary tract and in the bladder because the kidney goes through a lot of work, a lot of functions to make sure that we get rid of excessive electrolytes from our body, such as salt. Well, we don't want that absorbing back into the body through the bladder. That would defeat the purpose of our kidneys. So it's important that in this epithelium, they have this special role 
of resisting the transport of water and salt. Often this epithelium is also called urothelium. Now here's an example of stratified squamous keratinized epithelium skin. In the very top part of the image you can see some purple stained material. That's keratin. It's very thick skin such as we have on the palms of our hands and the soles of our feet. Wear and tear. And as I said earlier, I'll talk about skin in a later lecture. Well, epithelia in other parts of the body, or in some parts of the body at least, are given special names. I'm not going to go through all the names here. You can read through these names. But the main th important point is that sometimes you'll come across terms like endocardium or endothelium or respiratory tract epithelium or mesothelium or olfactory epithelium. They relate the very special names we give to epithelia in certain parts of the body. And we'll come across these special names in later lectures. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.